Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I welcome a guest from Ashland, Oregon. Now, this is the very southern part of our state, one of the prettiest regions. And during our discussions, we ventured into imposter syndrome. What is imposter syndrome? Why is it important? And why should an entrepreneur care? Now, quite serendipitous, which means agreeable things not sought for or a phenomenon of finding value, that this is the topic I will highlight. The reason I say this is because I recently presented on overcoming imposter syndrome at the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers in Vancouver, Washington, and the response I have received since that presentation has been enormous. In short, imposter syndrome is doubting your ability and feeling like a fraud. That sense that you do not belong for one reason or another. But why is it important to know about imposter syndrome? Because the phenomenon is disproportionately affects higher achieving people. As an entrepreneur, you may feel this phenomenon at some point. I know I have and still do. These are moments of feeling like, when are they going to figure out I do not belong? If you have followed me this far, then you may have heard my story, my personal story. It is a story of feeling like I do not belong, and many of us feel that way as well. Here are a few of tips for overcoming imposter syndrome. One, it is okay to highlight your accomplishments. It is not boasting. It is recognizing work done. I continue to say how I have never failed a day in my life. I either succeed or I learn. Failure to me is I have given up and I will no longer try. I will not do that. As Henry Ford once said, failure is only the opportunity to begin again more intelligently. Showcasing work may also open up other opportunities as it has for me. Two, stop comparing lives to carefully crafted profiles we see on social media. That is a trap to feel like you do not measure up. We have to rewrite the script plain in our minds. Wait until they find out that I have no idea what I am doing mindset. You do not have to be a social media influencer to be an influencer. Next time you walk into a room full of brilliant people, don't think, oh my God, everyone here is brilliant and I am not. Instead, think of the opportunity you have to learn from all of their brilliance. Three, visualize success. Like you visualize making a basketball shot or a golf putt or a perfectly mixed morning coffee, you have to visualize the success. Perfect practice does not make perfect. True perfection is virtually impossible to obtain and failing to do so only makes you feel like a fraud. Let perfection go. Last person to allegedly be perfect walked on water and made a feast out of bread and did all sorts of such things. Four. Fake it till you make it, baby. Okay, okay, let me explain this piece a little bit more. Fake it till you make it is a well-known phrase. Really not sure when or how it became famous as there's still some debate. But fake it till you make it is a show of confidence, competence, and an optimistic mindset. The best way to achieve this is through networking. Find a Facebook group or a Reddit forum and connect with other like-minded folks. A big piece of networking is support from others. These peers can help support an entrepreneur during downtimes such as a pandemic. Networking also builds self-confidence. Trust me, I know. Number five, lastly, if none of this works and you truly feel down, it is okay to seek help from others, such as a friend, a colleague, family member, or if you need to seek professional help. As a society, we need to remove the stigma of asking for support. Kindness and compassion instead of judgment and self-doubt will help maintain a realistic expectations. And that is why an entrepreneur should care. There has been a growing sense of isolation and burnout from entrepreneurs around the world, including here locally. Success as an entrepreneur is never guaranteed, and fame and fortune is even less likely. However, understanding that there are community members in the entrepreneur's corners is important. Amazon is going to be okay if we shop elsewhere. I think Bezos will find a way to get his yacht through that port anyways. But I'm more concerned about my neighbor and my neighbor's neighbor. We are a global community. We are citizens of Earth. We are entrepreneurs. Thank you, and I hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome. 
welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship, where we interview entrepreneurs to inspire the future entrepreneur. I'll be your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. So grab a drink, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. of theater and film and in 2016 launched Cafe Girl Productions Incorporated. Since then, Cafe Girl has created short films, vlogs, blogs, podcasts, and web series. Please welcome the owner of Cafe Girl Thriving Artists LLC, Leah Dougal. This episode is sponsored in part by Burnside Knives, essential tools for outdoor enthusiasts and working professionals like yourself. Visit BurnsideKnives.com. Your knife says a lot about you. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. This is your host, Mr. Gabriel Flores. Today, I'm here with the owner of Cafe Girl Thriving Artists Incorporated. We actually connected online. I'm very excited specifically about this one because this is my first Southern Oregon entrepreneur. (laughs) Leah, how are we doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for having me on this morning. Uh, This is my first time being in the interview to seat. I've been starting a podcast last since last year, last fall, and uh, I've been the interviewer. So this will be interesting. Nice. What's your podcast called? Uh, It's called the Fangirl Hour. Love it. And it's been a lot of fun helping me with the rebrand, which we'll be talking about in a little bit, um, because. The idea was, you know, I was looking at all of my fandoms growing up and they've actually been sort of a source of healing from, you know, when I was little with Night Court all the way up until, you know, in my 20s and 30s with Doctor Who. Just the connection we have with these pop culture references or whatever they are. And so I, you know, contacted a lot of uh, several of my different closest friends and started you know, I have a series of questions that I ask about, and it's been so sweet to hear what these television shows or whatever they would be. I interviewed someone about uh, a friend of mine that really loves the Kennedys, and oh, she has all this knowledge. And it was just really, it's just been very, very sweet. And I think goes along with the theme I want to uh, go forward with uh, Cafe Girl Thriving Artist is using our souls to create art and find healing. Mm, so love it. Love it. Now, before we get going into the cafe, let's go ahead and introduce the podcast audience to Leah. Go ahead and okay. introduce, give him a little background. So my name is Leah Dubel and I live in Ashland, Oregon. And with my partner of nine years going on 10 years, we have two cats named uh leo who is 21 and whenever i say that people are like wow i'm like he's fine like he's he's amazing <laughs> as of now he he's eating he's walking he's, he's got alive. his little attitude <laughs> yeah and then i have my kitty uh tansy who is nine and she'll be 10 next october so she's kind of the baby of the family even though she's nine and uh i actually moved here originally in 99 to go to college at Southern Oregon University. I graduated in 2002. I was a transfer student. Uh, I graduated, I I originally came to Ashland to study theater and I ended up graduating with a a, a bachelor's of science in human communication and a minor in theater. And then a few years later, I went back to California for graduate school. I got my uh, teaching credential, credential, elementary school. I taught for a while and kind of realized that I wasn't meant to be a teacher. That wasn't, I, I'm good with kids. I like kids. But the aspect of teaching, especially public school at the time, was just not, it didn't, I didn't wake up in the morning and go, oh my God, I can't wait to get, you know, to go teach yeah. and be with these kids as I think teachers should have. And a lot of my friends that are yeah, teachers, definitely. they have that. Um, my passion all my life was, I really was just drawn to writing naturally since as, as old as I could hold a pencil and write words. <laughs> and then, yeah, seriously. 
And I mean, it was just almost instinctual just being able to, to write. And I loved reading and then as, also acting. And, and um, I took singing and music and piano in high school and college or high school, college, all that stuff. <laughs> uh, and so, and then also at the same time, I, I think there's, I was never interested in being part of like the social standard, you know, yeah, yeah. going to college, getting married, getting the house, getting, you know, having the kids. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, I think at first, when I was younger, I, I rebelled against that norm in society. Um, now, as I get older, I see the value of it, of having that stability and security and giving someone, having raising someone and loving them. But at the time, you know, and growing up for many years, it was, I rebelled against it because I'm naturally more of an artist brain mindset. And I think that as I've been pondering it, my purpose is not to, is to be a little bit out of that norm and to shake things up, yeah, you know, and yeah. to cause people to think in order to transform the world, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's kind of what you're doing, right? So that's, that's kind of the, the goal of, of Cafe mm-hmm. Girl. So for the listeners at home, let's give them a little info. What is Cafe Girl? Now you're in a pivot, right? You were talking about mm-hmm. it briefly about rebranding. So go ahead and give it, give them to them the, the brand previously, mm-hmm. your current stage, and then what you're transitioning into. Okay. So in, so in 2016, I had written this script that was, it started with a Doctor Who fan fiction web series that I had based on a dream. Um, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, series of dreams that I had. I, I had these, I was married in about 2011, 2012, and I'm not married to that person anymore. And I remember having these dreams. He was the one that introduced me to Doctor Who, specifically with like all of it. And we watched a lot of the former stuff with the, um, with Romana, the companion Romana. And I had these dreams where I was Romana and all this, the story unfolded every night. And I'd wake up every morning and I tell my husband, like I had another dream and it was like this recurring dream. So I finally wrote it down. And in 2016, early 2016, I got some cast and crew together and, you know, we filmed it during a week, just some scenes and, and, it was not, it was really kind of thrown together. And previous that summer in 2015, I was working on a set for another film as a production assistant. And this friend of mine who was uh, there as an extra at on that day sat down with me and he's like, you know, I really think that you could be a good producer. You know, you could still act and have all that focus, but, you know, he was really encouraging me. And I was looking at him like, <laughs> you know, but then in that December, I realized and moving forward that I, I had a natural instinct of, you know, planning things out and, you know, a- arranging the schedules, especially with people working in different lives and finding the locations and putting it all together, all the things. And I, Cafe Girl, the name Cafe Girl was inspired or came from when I was in my 20s I had a group of friends at a cafe that I hung out with for a year right after college and it was just a really special time it was maybe only a year or so for me but all of us really connected and never forgot that now they're all old and have regular jobs and I was like (laughs) the one or whatever you know we're old we're it's just, you know, we weren't that, that was a youthful time yeah. so much that when we reconnect, it's almost like we're living in that moment again. Mm, um, nice. but I was like the one main girl, it was like me and there was maybe one or other girls, but it was mostly men. So I was like, or male, so it was cafe girl. I kind of adopted that at the time. So when I started the company, I thought, and it was at the beginning, it was just a film and media company or making films, short films, this and that. And Cafe Girl Productions. And then kind of trying to figure out how do you uh, register a business? How do you uh, get the EIN, all of that, like on the fly. Yeah. And during that time, I, you know, realized that I always wanted to have my own business, have make my own hours, this and that. And I already had been doing that in the sense that since about 2013 with I'm a dog walker. I'm a dog sitter. I'm an art model. I have, I do a full-time work 
without having that nine to five. So I was like, well, how can I get away from doing these jobs, these side hustles, this, these gigs and make something more. But the, as much as I love creating these films, these medias, creating these stories, uh, it's not something that's bringing in a lot of funds, you know, yeah. that's just how it is. And so I couldn't, I was just kind of struggling with that until 2020 happened. And I was able to kind of, you know, I, like we all were step back. We all had to step back. And during that time, I was able to slow down and start looking at all of myself, you know, everything. And I have, and had for many years, since maybe 2013, this uh, Facebook group called Artist Thriving Network, which is for artists of, it was started out as for actors and people like that to share their um, audition notices and such, but then it evolved and has evolved to everything and more of a kind of a community. And then I also have a blog called The Thriving Artist. And I was like, well, why don't I marry the two? And as I started marrying those two, I also looked at my history of life and everything I've been through and how I have a communication degree. You know, I, I've done public speaking and then I've, I'm a teacher and I'm done, you know, studied acting and all of this. And that's where these ideas of workshops and coaching came out and, and this idea of what does it mean to thrive? What does it mean to be a thriving artist? It's not necessarily, you know, <clears throat> being a celebrity and having your uh, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame or whatever <laughs> it is. It's it's actually it's it's just it's a mindset. So working with that, and I'm hoping that the one-on-one -on -one coaching and the workshops would be this sense of, and so workshops would be like a group and one-on-one, -on -one, obviously. And that that would be a way as I'm creating the lessons plans is that it's not just for actors, not just for people in film and theater, but it, it's we're calling it the thriving artist workshops using the very various facets of art to really connect with whatever you need to work with inside. Yeah. And then through that healing, become a better artist, become a better person and truly thrive. I love it. And, you know, for the folks at home that may not be aware of this. I think you kind of picked a perfect market, you know, in the Ashland area, because if yeah. for folks at home that may not be aware of this, they actually have the Shakespeare uh, Festival there in Ashland, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, they have the Shakespeare Festival, which is obviously the most worldwide uh, something, the tourist attraction for Ashland. But they also have a lot of other regional theaters, the Oregon Cabaret Theater, Camelot Theater. Okay. Um, and then a lot of a th very bustling community theater scene. And then on top of that, the film community has really been growing. Nice. And so there is, and then, then there, there's also the artist scene, the fine artist scene and the music scene. So it is, although it's a small town and a small area, there is so much creativity and energy that is happening here there is and you know for the folks at home that may not have a visited ashton before please do that is one of the greatest little small cities the hidden gem here in oregon beautiful mm -hmm. community right there down on the border of oregon and california so northern california folks if you're listening take a trip up north i-5 baby we're right there Beautiful, beautiful location. Now, one of the things you mentioned, um, you, you kind of, the way this started gravitating and, and it started snowballing into a, a thought was through dreams, but you also wrote down those dreams, right? That, do you do mm. that often? Do you kind of write your thoughts and ideas? And if so, is that pretty important to do? Yes. Uh, well, I want to specify that, that, that the dreams were about the story line of of the doctor who fan fiction that's how it started the production company um but yes overall i do keep a journal where i just i try to just write i don't try to you know put uh, put it into any format or it's yeah. not necessarily something that is shared um and just let the thoughts come freely and i also do monthly vision boards okay. where uh, just there, I like the idea more of, uh, excuse me, intentions rather than goals, because I feel like goals, it's like, if you don't reach those goals within a set period of time, there's a sense of failure about, it, or even mm, resolutions nice. that same way, but yeah. intentions, 
they have a more of a fluidity to them. So that's why I do these vision boards. And a lot of times it's the kind of the same intention over and over and over yeah. that hasn't been reached yet, but it's just that this is what we're working towards. And, and it's a kind of a combination of, you know, my personal growth and the business and, you know, whatever the side hustle, just to focus, right. you know, Nice. I like it all together. Now, one of the things you also mentioned was when you're starting this process, you're going through the uh, the AIN, so the employee identification number Mm -hmm. for folks at home for tax purposes, right? And and starting a business. Now, is this your first business? Uh, Yes, I would say yes. Uh, Since 2016, I've been doing that. Now, the difference now is that I've been working with a business advisor to help Mm, with the creating the business plan and, and, really getting focused about it. Yeah. And then we, it's been an INC and it still is on the books, Cafe Girl Productions INC. Um, within next week, I'm hoping to change that name. And because of tax purposes and because my business partners have a lot like side business or the side, uh, they have actual normal jobs at present. <laughs> I'm doing like a lot of the work. So we're changing it. We'll be changing it temporarily to an LLC until we can really get the workshops on coaching going. And then, and they can come in and uh, do some of that as well. Then we can become incorporated and include them in that. And it's so until that time, I will, you know, it's, they'll just be like staff and I'll be paying. Yeah, totally. Totally makes sense. Now, now what, what would you say, since this is you know relatively new, what would you say has been difficult about starting a business? You know, I think that the hardest thing for me, and this is something previous to 2020 that I dealt with, and I didn't even know it had a name, but the sense of feeling like an imposter, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Ah, and yes. I would look at all these yes. other people specifically in the film world or the entrepreneur world that seemed to be thriving. And I didn't see that in myself. And so this, I didn't even know that there was really the imposter syndrome until like a few weeks ago, an old friend said, well, you know, I haven't felt like this in a while. And I'm like, what is that? And so then I looked into it and realized that had been something that I had felt for many years until stepping back from the busyness and the rat right race of it in 2020, I was able to see all the things that I'd done and really see how I had accomplished them and find that strength within myself. And also realize that something that uh, really got to me, a thought that came to me was that you don't have to be an expert. You just have to begin. Mm, And so that taking those first steps, whether, you know, whether it was editing content with FX or the podcast or whatever it is, writing the workshops. It doesn't have to be perfect. It never will be perfect. You just have to begin and you start to learn as you go. And so that has, um, and these people that are maybe years and years have been doing this for 30 years, they started out where I'm too, and they're still learning. That's very true. You know, that's, that's such a great point. And I think for aspiring entrepreneurs, it does not matter your age either to start to learn something new. I yeah. myself as a podcast host have definitely gone through the stages of imposter syndrome. And I don't think I n- noticed it until this moment right now. I think until you st- stated that and a lot of it too, I, I must admit I had a conversation recently with one of my past guests. I'm like, man, I feel like I still have so much to learn. I'm, I'm, yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm in the middle of an ocean floundering right now. He's like, mm-hmm look back at all the things you've done. So for the folks at home that are listening, you know, inspiring entrepreneurs or individuals that are just doing a small project, look back at all of the things that you've accomplished to get to this moment and take pride in that. You know, in fact, Mm -hmm. if you look back on your life and you get embarrassed in a moment, good. That means you've grown. That means you have Mm -hmm. matured. Okay. So look back at those embarrassing moments and like, man, sure. It was a a pretty, pretty immature child back in the Mm day, but Today, you're different, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. Leah, what has been easy about starting this business? Has there been anything easy? Yes, I think so. I think what's been easy is in those early days of you know writing the scripts and coming together was 
finally finding something where that makes me feel alive. And in that moment of being alive, uh, it's, it's everything comes together. Mm -hmm. And it's just this, this truly, this feeling of, of, of joy that I am finding my purpose. And that's been something that has been, you know, I was struggling with the imposter imposter syndrome, but when, you know, I've done theater and film. And so when I, and I got back to that, into that in about 2012, and when I got back into that, it was like a light bulb went off and it was like, this is what you're supposed to do. And so everything that I've done since that time has been this evolution of going deeper into my purpose and finding that sense of joy in life. And, and so the creative aspect, I would say, and opening myself up to different aspects of creativity, whether that isn't necessarily on camera acting, now it's, you know, more behind the camera. And also even in the sense of just being a producer and, you know, stepping back and arranging the funding and doing all that kind of thing. There's an aspect of creativity to that. You know, I, I was thinking about how, when you look at like a child, I've done nanny work in the past and a child is so inquisitive and curious about all the things that we adults just you know take for granted or kind of loathe the doing like paying bills something as simple as that as a kid is like oh my gosh what does that mean to pay bills and so if you (laughs) can look at it in the sense of childlike wonder and this like game of it all it's like oh wow you know I pay bills and you know I clean my house whereas kids are just yeah so I think that that's another way that I've gone deeper into that sense of joy and self-purpose is you know looking at it through that lens and I'd say childlike not childish (laughs) yeah and I would would say what I wouldn't give to go back to not remember what it was like to pay bills (laughs) 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 I wouldn't give anything to go back you know one of the things you you discuss right now too is funding right because so I want to be very honest with the folks at home we were talking about passion right and finding a passion and and growing your passion right I think I'm founding mine as, as being this podcast hope uh, right now and doing this this kind of creative art myself, but it's also imperative to find financial support for your passion, mm-hmm. right? You ha- if you're going to yeah. turn your passion into a career, you have to have that financial. And so how do you, Leah, how do you market? How do you brand your company? How, how do you get on new clients? So especially with the, the rebrand, um, I'm still adjusting to that. Um, I do have, I do claim and call myself a gig worker at present. So I'm working a lot of different types of jobs from dog walking to modeling to acting gigs. And I have been, I have several, you know, my business accounts and my personal accounts and I kind of balance it with my income. Um, And as far as the rebrand and it's, it's, it's coming out as very fluid because in conversations with people, as I'm talking about this, you know, the workshops and whatnot, especially with in the film and me art world, theater world that I'm connected to, that is my first focus. I, I want to expand past that, but in order to have clients, I need to kind of go with what I have. And so I just talk about it, you know, as I'm in a social circle, well, what are you doing? Well, you know, I'm doing, I'm a gig worker, you know, as a side hustle or as the normie job. But I'm also working towards taking my business to this level so that as we have these workshops and coaching, I can then funnel that funding into creating this art um, and and the the film and media. And so that it's a sustainable business. We might still have to, you know, go for the the crowdfunding and such. Mm, But that that's just that's just something you have to do. But hopefully a lot of it will come from my own source of revenue for the business as it moves forward. Uh, So that's been important. And just keeping it, you know, keeping people aware of the rebranding. You know, we we just, I just changed all the social media to Cafe Girl Thriving Artists. And I am waiting until all the paperwork gets finished for the changeover with the business and the federal uh, to really change the website and, and stuff like that. But um, we also have a Patreon so that we don't, we have about 10 patrons, but 
Uh, so it's not a huge, you know, but it's funding something, break, but it's something, but it's something yeah. and it can continue to grow. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I think just there's a sense of fluidity that as I, as I take care of myself, as I spend a lot of time making sure that I'm caring for my own needs, whether that is making sure that all my bills are paid, you know, in the past, I, I just thought I'm just going to jump into it and, you know, kind of went for broke and yeah. that I sacrificed my own needs. So, you know, paying my bills, getting debt paid off, as well as, you know, waking up every morning and doing a yoga and a meditation and, you know, spending time just in my own self-care and art for art's sake. I, I have this less a sense of kind of striving or, or competition, yeah. I guess. Um, you know, that's part of it as an actor going to the auditions and such, but and less a worry of trying to get there and just kind of relaxing into knowing that it it's happening. I mean, I'm definitely taking steps every day, one baby step at a time, nice. but I'm not, there's just, I'm just relaxing into it because I know, I don't know if that makes sense. No, no, it's great. Now <laughs> yeah. it's kind of speaking in that terms, right? You're, you're kind of speaking on your own past experience, right? And trying to talk about your growth. Now with that said, looking back on your past experience, looking back at your pivot, you know, looking forward in five years, what advice would you give aspiring entrepreneurs or, or other creators? Uh, what, what advice would you give them? Oh, well, I think I, I would just say that one thing is you don't have to be an expert. You just have to begin. And in that beginning, one of the things that really is important for me is having that balance and in your life and really just finding balance and being rooted in just every aspect of life. And then when it comes to my creativity or my creative projects, whether it's like writing a script or editing a video, especially ongoing long-term uh, film or web series, you don't have to tackle it all in one day, write a scene, write a couple lines, you know, edit one scene, just do it one day at a time, especially if you still have your normie job, you have to balance it. You have to find that kind of balance. I keep lists where I just have a list for the week and I cross it off as I get through it. Nice. Um, and it, it's just sense of balance and being rooted and making sure that you're taking care of, you know, don't jump into this world of being an entrepreneur without um without a, a background of finances don't just trust that the money's going to come you really have to find that balance and and take baby steps and just every day doing a little bit you will accomplish it you'll come to that end i mean i noticed that with my i had this we have this web series this original web series there's two seasons and we're hoping to get into the third season it's called nate and laura and how they met and it was uh, it was first inspired. I have, I had myself and four other friends that I started writing that they would start sharing with me their love life and all their problems. And then I'd also been watching all these like rom-com Netflix sitcoms. And I started kind of creating something from that. Nice. But how I wrote it was a little, a scene each day or less than a scene, maybe even like five lines or something. Um, and that was just a rough draft, like before work, you know, I just sit down and write a scene and then go off to work and then from there I was able to do a reading of it and get some feedback and then you know start filming it and I remember one of the actresses asked me how did you write it and I said a little each day love it and so I think that's still something I do to this this point I mean yeah back in the day I tried when we did the um we had this one summer where we did a big Doctor Who fan fiction. It was amazing and beautiful, the production of it all. When we became a real family creating these heart heartsick and homesick. And so when it came to post-production, I just sat down and like did it <laughs> like, yeah. in like a month. Um, they weren't as long or as involved. And I did have a little bit more of a team behind to help me, but that was fine then, but I found now 
it's benefit. It's, it's easier for me to just do a little bit at a time and, and then it's accomplished. And it, then it feels good once you do finally accomplish it. It does. Those like, little accomplishments, it. those little yeah. accomplishments, they just add up. So for the folks uh-huh. at home, Leah, how can they get in contact with you? How can they find out more information about Cafe Girl Thriving Artists Incorporated currently, eventually LLC? Uh, what's mm-hmm. your social media handles? How can they find out more information? So it's currently Cafe Girl Productions, INC. Um, legally, it's but it's Cafe Girl Thriving Artists, um, LLC, to come from. But right now, go to the website, www.cafegirlproductionsinc.com. And that will take you all to the links. Perfect. Um, we do. We are on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram. I do have a Pinterest as well. <laughs> and we have the Patreon. If you want to support us, www.patreon.com slash Cafe Girl Productions. Perfect. Um, we all have also have for the three other web series, they have their own YouTube channels and Twitters and Facebooks and all that. Um and we have a, I do a monthly newsletter. So if you go to the website, you can sign up to be on the newsletter. And that's another way as well. Perfect. So, and yeah. Leah, thank you so much for taking your time to share your story. Very excited about what's going on in Ashley. And I, next time I'm down there, I'll definitely look you up and we'll try to connect and oh. get a drink. I, I usually I try to that. get down there about once a quarter. Beautiful folks at home. If you have not been to Ashton, go check it out. Good old Southern Oregon University Raiders, baby. So please go down there, visit. Beautiful community, beautiful environment. Again, Leah, thank you so much. Thank you for tuning in to the Shades of Entrepreneurship. For more information, please follow the Shades of E on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or visit theshadesofe.com.